Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, (laughs) That's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. Ram fans, this is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at L.A. Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, Ram fans. Episode 402 of Rams Up, or AD, episode number three. That's our third episode after Donald. But we're not going to be talking much about Aaron Donald this episode. Moving forward, we will at one point have an episode celebrating his entire career This episode, we're going to restart our tour around Los Angeles Rams position groups. This episode, we'll talk cornerbacks. We're also going to introduce you to our new safety, Cameron Curl. Get into the details a little bit more as far as his career and his background. Since it is episode 402, we'll talk about a player who wore number two. Episode 302, we talked about Robert Woods, Bobby Trees, who were a couple of numbers for the Rams, including number two. This episode, I'm going to talk about a punter, and I was looking at all the guys who have worn number two for the Rams, a pretty short list, and I was actually surprised to see Mike Horan's name on this list. I, I don't even remember him being a part of the Rams, but he actually won a Super Bowl ring with the Rams in that win over the Titans. He was signed in 1997 by the St. Louis Rams, and for that season appeared in 10 games, moved on to the Bears, and then was re-signed by the Rams again on November 10th, 1999, and appeared in the final eight games of the season, including that Super Bowl. And he actually had a fumbled snap in that game on a first-half field goal attempt. But one of the more accomplished punters in the history of the National Football League, and he did spend a season and a half with our Rams. And I also have a trivia question for you, a free agency trivia question. On April 24th, 2020, the Rams signed two significant players, added two guys to their defense. One of them was outside linebacker Leonard Floyd, and the other one was the former 46th overall pick by the Detroit Lions in 2016, came over to the Rams and Fought through some injuries, but eventually really made an impact, especially in that Super Bowl run that culminated in the victory over the Cincinnati Bengals. Who was this guy? 
This is an easy one. I'm sorry if you can't get this one. I'm going to have to have you turn in your Rams street cred badge right now. you got to know this one. Answer at the end of this episode. Hey, it's time for yet another player focus, and, and that's a good thing, I guess. It means we're adding players. Last week, we spent some time getting to know our new tight end, Colby Parkinson. That was on the podcast, and we had a YouTube video as well on the channel. Today, I'm going to introduce you, as best I can anyways, to our new safety, Cameron Curl. Certainly not a well-known player, but man, he has made a name for himself at the NFL level. Let's go back to the beginning, though. He played ball at Muskogee High School in Muskogee, Oklahoma, and went on to play at the University of Arkansas. 34 games there over three years, 175 tackles, two sacks, and two interceptions. Enters the draft, and NFL.com rated him as a priority undrafted free agent. Destined to be a backup, is how they put it. And hey, I'm not picking on NFL.com. This happens all the time. Guys that are slated to go undrafted, rated in the 200 to 300 range, and end up having great NFL careers. Everybody gets it wrong more often than you'd expect, actually. And the reverse happens as well. First round draft picks that really amount to nothing. NFL.com went on to say he'd be better suited as a split safety come up and hit and tackle, but doesn't have the frame or power to be an impactful run deterrent near the line of scrimmage while he's proved them wrong, as we'll get to in a second. Basically, they said he has a chance to become a backup safety at some point if he demonstrates the necessary speed at the NFL level. So he ends up going to the Commanders. They were the Redskins at the time, of course, the second pick of the seventh round, same draft, by the way, that the Rams drafted Terrell Burgess in the third round and Jordan Fuller in the sixth. So NFL.com and the Rams were on the same page when it comes to Cameron Curl. So he takes over the starting job in his rookie year after starting safety Landon Collins suffered a season-ending injury in week eight. Following week, he leads the team at tackles with 11 and also picked up his first sack Picked up his first career interception in week 14 of that season against the 49ers. Returned at 76 yards for a touchdown. So he's starting to make his mark, right? Finished the season with three interceptions, 88 tackles, and two sacks. Missed some time in 2022 with a thumb injury. But man, by that time, he was starting to get recognized as a very, very good player. Pro football focus. They just raved about him his ability in coverage, his ability to defend the run, and said by the end of the 2022 season, he was perhaps the commander's most important defensive player. Coming up to the line of scrimmage, making tackles, defending passes, making big plays. Bottom line is, right now, as of today, Cameron Curl is one of the best all-around safeties in the league. And the film doesn't lie. <laughs> He looks like he can really be an impactful player for our Los Angeles Rams. Pretty clearly, he's the best safety we've had in a while. I mean, when was the last time we had a safety, a difference maker safety? You know, John Johnson had his moments, Jordan Fuller, except for the injuries, he might have been on track to be that type of safety as well. Taylor Rapp, you know, he was okay. Hey, then there's Eric Weddle, of course, for a few games anyways. You tell me, when was the last time we had a safety that could play potentially at the Pro Bowl level? Maybe Aeneas Williams. I have to go that far back. But Cameron Curl, we have upgraded the safety position. And if we have to pair him up with Russ East, if that's what our safety group ends up looking like with Quentin Lake playing that star position covering the slot, Darius Williams on one side, and I'm not sure who the other corner is yet. But our secondary is suddenly looking pretty promising, and that's going to help that other aspect of the defense everybody's worried about, the pass rush. Hey, you can get the sacks with excellent edge rushers. You can also get sacks with great coverage on the back end, and that's what Cameron Curl's going to bring. Really excited about this signing. Potentially the most impactful free agent signing for the Rams this year. Cameron Curl. Welcome to the Los Angeles Rams. We'll be back in a second to talk 
cornerbacks. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. It's only a kick. A jump, a block, it's only a serve, it's only a tackle, a run, it's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations, Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry Bahamas. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperice.com. We took a long pause in our tour of RAM position groups. Made sense to wait out free agency a little bit before we restarted this. This episode, I wanted to talk about cornerbacks. I was looking over what the Rams have done in the draft over the last 11, 12 years and kind of surprising. In 2011, they did not draft a cornerback. In 2012, They hit on two, Janoris Jenkins and Tremaine Johnson in the second and third round, respectively. In 2013, they drafted Brandon McGee. In 2014, they drafted E.J. Gaines, who turned out to be a pretty good player. Moved on to the Jets, I think it was. And in the draft chronicles I looked at, they also list LaMarcus Joyner as a cornerback drafted by the Rams, but he was more of a safety, played the slot a little bit. But this is what really surprised me. From 2015 through 2018, so that's Jeff Fisher's last two years, Sean McVay's first two years, the Rams did not draft a single cornerback. I find that pretty amazing. In 2019, they drafted David Long in the third round. That was an okay pick. In 2020, no cornerback selected. In 2021, Robert Rochelle, some would call him a bust, fourth round pick, number 130 overall. In 2022, two cornerbacks, Kobe Durant in the fourth round, Darion Kendrick in the sixth round. I would say the jury is still out on those two guys. Right now, they're pretty typical cornerbacks in the NFL, occasionally make plays and occasionally don't, as we've seen, especially from Kendrick. And then in 2023, in the sixth round, Trey Hodges, Tomlinson and the jury is still out on him as well. Heavily involved in special teams. We'll see if he can survive on an NFL field as a slot cornerback, perhaps. And the current roster, well, remember, Akilah Witherspoon and Duke Shelley, both unrestricted free agents. So that leaves Durant, Kendrick, and Tomlinson, the three cornerbacks they've drafted over the last two years. And our new addition, free agent signing Darius Williams, a familiar face, talented cornerback, Right now, I guess he's our CB1, maybe ends up being our CB2. We also have Sean Jolly on this roster and Cameron McCutcheon. McCutcheon, an undrafted rookie free agent last year. And we should also probably include Quentin Lake when we talk about the cornerback group because he plays all over the place, gives this unit some flexibility. He can come up and play the slot. 
Maybe Lickett's moved to safety, pair him up with our new addition, Cameron Curl, back there. We leave Russ East as a backup. Maybe Russ East comes up and play the star position. Not sure. Remains to be seen. So a week into free agency, who is still out there? Well, let's start with Akilo Witherspoon. He remains unsigned. The market value for him might be a little steep now that they've added Darius Williams. Not sure if that's in the cards, but Williams and Witherspoon would be a pretty good pairing. I'd be satisfied with that. Not overly excited, but I think we'd be good to go at the cornerback position with our three young guys as well. Who else is out there? A lot of pretty good players. Christian Fulton, he'd be north of $6 million a year. Some older players like Patrick Peterson, Stephon Gilmore. Don't think the Rams would go that way. And then, of course, there's Tredavious White, who is visiting with the Rams and several other teams this week. Now, if he's healthy, that would be a great add, and our cornerback group would be good to go. But there is a risk there. I have to acknowledge that, recovering from an Achilles injury. Really tough to predict what the Rams might do to address that other starting spot, or maybe they're happy with the group they have, and they go cornerback early in the draft. And speaking of the draft, this is a really deep class. I've talked about the top five guys in random order here. Kool-Aid McKinstry, Nate Wiggins, Cooper DeGene, who some categorize as a safety. Let's just call him a DB. Terion Arnold and Quinion Mitchell. Mitchell, the one that exploded onto the scene in the Senior Bowl, probably elevated himself from a late second, third round pick into the first round. I think people need to pump their brakes a little bit on him. Yeah, he is probably deserving of a first-round selection, but let's not elevate him over guys like Wiggins and Arnold. People overreact a little bit. Of course, the Rams love the Senior Bowl. They love players that do well at the Senior Bowl, so maybe they have eyes on Mitchell. And there's not a big drop-off through the top 100 picks overall as far as cornerbacks go. Kamari Lassiter, Enos Rakestraw, TJ Tampa, Kalen King, Kalen Carson. You can get good cornerbacks in this draft in the fifth round. We'll talk about some of these late round prospects in a moment here. So what's my conclusion? What are the Rams going to do at the cornerback position? The Rams passed on cornerbacks until the sixth round last year, and maybe that's because they saw what this year's class looked like. They knew they were going to bounce back, draft a couple of cornerbacks in 2024. So they're going to draft a cornerback. It's just a matter of how long they wait. Do they want to draft a guy in the first round, second round, or are they going to wait and get value later? I mean, with the Aaron Donald retirement, new focus on the defensive line, still need some help on the edge, perhaps, linebacker. So what draft picks do I like? Well, those top five, love to have any one of them. Kool-Aid McKinstry, Nate Wiggins, Cooper DeGene, a safety slash cornerback where he fit in, not quite sure. Terion Arnold and Quinion Mitchell. The next three, not too shabby either. Enos Rickstraw out of Missouri, TJ Tampa, Iowa State, and Kalen King out of Penn State. And then there's another big group that's really good too. Now, one guy a lot of Ram fans have been talking about is Chris Abrams Drain out of Missouri. The problem with him is 5'11, 178. He would have some limitations. Not real versatile, probably have to cover slot receivers. And then some of these teams line up 6'2", 215 pound guys in the slot. What do you do with Abrams Drain in those situations? Kind of the same challenge the Rams are having with Trey Tomlinson. Another two to keep an eye on, Kamari Lassiter out of Georgia, probably a second round pick. And Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon, 6'3", 195, a bigger cornerback. Paul Wally really likes him. Probably going to be gone by the end of the second round. Some other later round picks I like. I mentioned Renardo Green out of Florida State. Mocked him to the Rams, I think, twice now. He could be there in the fourth round. A much later pick, Storm Duck. What do I like about Storm Duck? I like his name. (laughs) That's it. Kool-Aid McKinstry and Storm Duck. Can we draft those two guys? But seriously... Duck is actually a pretty good player. Namaya Pritchett, 6 feet, 182 pounds out of Auburn. The knock on him is that he's not real aggressive, likes to give receivers a cushion, play off the ball. Hey, that's what the Rams have been doing, so maybe he's a good fit. Maybe Chris Shola will think he's perfect for this defense. 
Another guy I like, probably a fourth round pick, late third, is Cam Hart out of Notre Dame. This guy brings it all, man-to-man, -man, breaking down routes, good in run defense, high IQ player. Well, actually, he doesn't bring it all. He needs coaching up on fundamentals, and he could be vulnerable if he gets matched up with a speed guy. Someone that likes to get vertical could be challenged in that department. But other than that, a very well-rounded player. Now, I know that Rams don't have a fourth-round pick. Now, my original theory was pre-AD retirement was that the Rams were going to maximize quality over quantity, try to move up in the first round potentially, or trade up into the fourth round, come away with fewer picks but better players. But now with this retirement, I think it changes everything. They may indeed try to add a few picks in this draft put themselves in a situation where the Rams can draft two or three defensive linemen while still hitting on other positions. Or, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they just stick with their 11 picks. Maybe they try to trade up and get a true impact, sure thing, defensive player early in the first round. But then again, they can sit at 19 and one of the top two defensive tackles falls on their lap. A lot to think about between now and the draft, and Paul Wallia and I, and Ian and Tom perhaps as well, we'll be running all the scenarios on our mock drafts and try to figure out which approach is best. But as far as cornerbacks go, do I still think they're going to draft a cornerback in the first round? Probably not. I think they can get a good one later, possibly even two. I think there are bigger needs, more pressing needs early in the draft. And of course, if they sign Tredavious White or another talented free agent cornerback, maybe they don't draft a cornerback at all. A lot of unknowns. Bottom line, right now, I think it's more likely the Rams add a cornerback in the draft in the third or fifth round or the fourth round if they pick up an extra pick. That's my thinking right now, and I'm sticking with it. And the answer to my trivia question, who was that player that got signed right alongside Leonard Floyd in April of 2020? Former 46 overall pick by the Detroit Lions, Sean Robinson. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.